The Atlas Vampire case captured national attention in 1932, when Stockholm police made a shocking discovery. The lifeless body of Lily Lindström, a 31-year-old prostitute, was discovered on May 4, 1932, within her modest apartment located in the Atlas neighborhood of Stockholm, near St. Riksplan. Lily was quite unconventional for the time, as she operated as a call girl, who arranged meetings with clients at her apartment, rather than soliciting on the streets. Upon entering Lily's apartment, detectives were confronted with a gruesome scene. Lily had been fatally struck on the head, indicating blunt force trauma. Even more unsettling, the investigators discovered traces of saliva on her neck and body, while also noticing a bloodstained gravy ladle nearby. The murderer earned the moniker Vampire of Atlas, due to a chilling suspicion held by the initial responding detectives at the crime scene. They believed that after killing Lily, the perpetrator had consumed her blood. The gruesome nature of the crime, coupled with the scarcity of blood found, led many to speculate that the killer had either consumed it entirely or stored it in a container of some kind. The presence of the blood-stained gravy ladle, further supported the hypothesis that it had been used to drink Lily's blood. The last person known to have seen Lily alive was Mimi, a 35-year-old prostitute who lived below her. According to Mimi's statement to the police, Lily had visited her apartment a few days prior to her murder to borrow some condoms. It was not unusual for Lily, often unclothed, to approach Mimi's door and request condoms. Concern grew within Mimi when she didn't see Lily for a few days, prompting her to contact the authorities. In addition to the blood drained from her body, Lily's lifeless form was discovered lying face down on her own bed. She was unclothed, and her garments were neatly folded, and placed on a nearby chair. Detectives observed significant decomposition, leading them to conclude that Lily had been deceased for several days before her discovery. Moreover, it was theorized that the killer had engaged in sexual intercourse with Lily prior to her murder, as consequently, the Stockholm police immediately turned their focus towards the men who frequented Lily's apartment. A total of nine men were interviewed, however their identities were never disclosed to the public, and all of them were eventually released. None of the individuals proved to be viable suspects. Regrettably, this marked the end of the Atlas Vampire case, as no substantial leads, suspects, or conclusive evidence emerged. The Swedish Police Museum currently houses the evidence collected by the Stockholm detectives, which includes hair and saliva samples, and aged condoms. In 1932, Stockholm detectives faced a significant challenge due to the abundance of individuals named Lily, particularly within the Atlas neighborhood. Adjacent to Lily's apartment was Sancta Riksplan, a district known for its notorious concentration of prostitutes. During that time, acts of violence and murders were distressingly common in or around Sancta Riksplan. The Stockholm police placed significant emphasis on a particular item discovered in Lily's anus, the condom. Based on its placement, detectives concluded that the killer and Lily were engaged in anal intercourse, when the assailant struck the back of Lily's head with an unidentified object. Although the term was not coined at the time, it is speculated that the assailant may have attempted a donkey punch to intensify his own orgasm. This suggests that the motivation behind killing Lily was likely driven by lust or sexual deviance. Another revealing aspect of the killer's personality was the meticulous manner in which he left Lily's apartment after committing the murder. Despite inflicting multiple blows to Lily's head, the killer left minimal blood evidence, and even took the time to fold Lily's clothing. Could this attention to cleanliness indicate that the assailant had a predisposition for tidiness or a compulsion for orderliness? One of the prevailing theories surrounding the case suggests that the culprit may have been a police officer. This speculation is fueled by the killer's deliberate efforts to minimize the presence of clues. Alternatively, it is possible that the killer, who was a cop, intentionally created a bizarre crime scene to mislead fellow officers on a wild goose chase. However from a modern standpoint, Lily's bedroom was actually rich with evidence. 
The murderer's saliva was discovered on her body, his semen was found in the condom, and his fingerprints were present on the gravy ladle. It is important to note that during the time of the investigation in 1932, DNA testing did not exist, and Stockholm detectives were not even familiar with the concept of DNA. Confessions played a prominent role in solving most murders during that era. One of the most extreme theories proposed in relation to the case suggests that the perpetrator was an actual vampire. This theory posits that the events of the murder served as the factual basis for the 1972 television movie, The Night Stalker. The belief in a real vampire stems from two key elements of the case, the killer's seemingly supernatural ability to evade police capture, and the evidence pointing towards the consumption of Lily's blood. However, the notion of blood consumption was met with skepticism by the Swedish police themselves. Some officers asserted that the ladle contained Lily's blood, but admitted that there was no definitive proof that the killer had imbibed from it. Nevertheless, the scarcity of blood at the crime scene remained peculiar. Could it be plausible that Lily's killer arrived at her apartment, equipped with a syringe and a suction device of some kind? This speculation raises further questions regarding the methods employed by the assailant. The enigmatic nature of the case attracted the attention of a creepypasta writer, who crafted a fictional account titled, Based on a True Story. In this version, the creepypasta suggests that Lily's demise was at the hands of a mysterious man who had appeared in her nightmares. While this aspect of the story is unquestionably fictional, the writer implies that Lily had encountered her killer previously. Considering her profession, it is highly plausible that the perpetrator was a regular client. If this were indeed the case, it raises the question of why the Stockholm police failed to identify Lily's killer, despite interviewing numerous individuals who frequented her services. Does this imply that Lily encountered her murderer for the first time on the fateful night he took her life? Despite exhaustive efforts by the Stockholm police, the questions may forever remain unanswered. The investigation eventually reached a standstill, with no viable suspects or conclusive evidence emerging. The case faded from the public consciousness, becoming one of those infamous mysteries that intrigued people for generations to come. Years turned into decades, and the memory of Lily Lindström and her gruesome murder began to fade. The Swedish Police Museum preserved the evidence, serving as a reminder of the unsolved crime. However, Hope for closure seemed distant, but fate has a way of surprising us when we least expect it.